Hello and welcome back to the Master Civil Engineering. In the previous video, we learned that how to find the support reactions and draw the bending moment diagram for a parabolic three-hinged arch. And in this video, you will learn that how to find the normal thrust and radial shear for a parabolic three-hinged arch. I have been given a question which states that a parabolic arch with supports at the same level is subjected to a combined loading shown in the figure below. We have to find the support reactions and the normal thrust and radial shear at a point just to the left of 150 kN concentrated load. You can see this is a parabolic 300 arch okay, with uh, top hinge at point C. Uh, the total span of this arch is 40 meter. Two types of loading are acting on this arch. First is the concentrated load 150 kN and second one is the uniformly a distributed load of 4 kN per meter okay and the rise of the arch at the center is 12 meter the first thing which you will do is that you will first find the reactions for this arch for this the free body diagram for this arch is uh, shown okay let us assume the uh, direction of the reactions at point a let us assume ax this acts in the rightward direction ay and by this acts in the upward direction and bx this acts in the uh, leftward direction okay uh, after that you will take the moment about the left support a is equal to zero and you will assume that clockwise moments are positive and anti-clockwise moments are negative okay so the first moment about point a will be moment of 150 newton its lever arm is 8 meter and this is a clockwise moment about point a so it will be 150 into 8 second moment will be the moment of this 4 kilo newton per meter so it will be 4 multiplied by the span which is 20 multiplied by the half of the span which is 10 plus the distance uh, this uh, 20 meter okay and this uh, moment is also clockwise after that the third moment will be due to this vertical reaction by and its lever arm is 40 meter and this moment will be anti-clockwise about point a moment of ax and bx about point a will be zero because lever arm is zero okay from this you will calculate the value of by which is 90 kilo newton upward since the value of uh, by is positive it means our assumed direction is correct by acts in the upward direction okay after that you will take the vertical equilibrium of forces that is ay plus by minus 150 minus 4 into 20 this is equal to 0 you will assume that upward forces are positive and downward forces are negative okay so it will be ay plus 90 minus 230 is equal to 0 from this you will get the value of ay equal to 140 kilonewton again the value of ay is positive it means ay acts in the assumed direction as shown in the fpd that is in the upwards direction after finding the vertical reactions now we will find the horizontal reactions for this you will take the uh, movement about this uh, point c you will consider only this segment ac of the arch okay and let us take the movement about this hinge at c equal to 0 uh, again clockwise movements will be assumed as positive and anti-clockwise movements as negative uh, so movement of ax about point c this will be uh, anti-clockwise and the liver arm between uh, ax and c this is uh, the rise of the arch which is 12 so it will be minus ax into 12 plus movement of ay about point c so this will be a clockwise movement and liver arm is 8 plus 12 which is 20 and movement of 150 newton about c this will be an anti-clockwise movement and liver arm is 12 meter okay uh, so from this uh, you will get the value of ax after putting the value of ay equal to 140 the value of ax will be 83.33 kilonewton and it is positive it means it acts in the assumed direction as shown in the fpd that is towards the right after that uh, you will take the horizontal equilibrium of forces okay since there are only two horizontal force acting on this arch that is ax and bx so we will have ax minus bx is equal to zero we'll assume the forces in the right words are positive and force in the left word are negative uh, so the value of bx this will be 83.33 kilonewton again but it will act in the leftward direction as assumed in the fpd after finding the uh, uh, vertical as well as the horizontal reactions now it's time to find the normal thrust and radial shear to find the normal thrust and uh, radial shear just to the left of the 150 kilo newton uh, load we first need an angle uh, which this arch makes with the horizontal at this point okay to find uh, the normal thrust and radial shear we will first find the angle between the horizontal and the arch just to the left of the 150 kilo newton okay this uh, is uh, found out from the mm, 
the formula of ordinate of parabolic arch ordinate at any point in parabolic arch this is given as y is equal to 4 hx multiplied by l minus x divided by l square h is the total rise of the arch which is 12 meter x is the distance from the left or right point okay so if i have to find the um, ordinate at this 150 kilo newton i will simply put x is equal to 8 h 12 and l this is the total length of the arch which is 40 meter but we don't have to find the ordinate we have to find the slope for this we will uh, differentiate this uh, ordinate that is dy by dx which is equal to tan theta so it will be 4 h multiplied by l minus 2x divided by l square this will be the uh, differentiation of this y okay now this is tan theta uh, Uh, this is equal to 4h l minus 2x divided by l square. We have to find the slope at uh, uh, x is equal to 8 meter. That is at the point just to the left of 150 kilo newton. So put x is equal to 8 in the above formula. That is tan theta. It will be 4 into 12. Okay, into 40 minus 2 into 8 divided by 40 square. So tan theta will be equal to 0.72. Theta will be tan of inverse 0.72, or the value of theta will be 35.75 degrees. Okay, so angle at this point that is just to the left of the 150 kilo newton. This is 35.75 degrees. Okay, after knowing the angle, now we can find the radial uh, shear and normal thrust. To find the normal thrust and radial shear, you will get a section just to the left of the 150 kilo newton load. Okay, you can see I have drawn a figure. This is the section at just to the left of the 150 kilo newton load. This is. Uh, here the section this vertical line is my section okay uh, radial shear okay normal thrust this acts normal to the arch this is the normal thrust that is this line is our uh, normal thrust will be along this direction and radial shear it's along the radial direction of the arch so this line will be the radial shear okay after cutting the section uh, the forces which are acting uh, on the section arch this will be ax and ay to balance this at this point we will have ax and ay but in the opposite direction okay if ax is ay is acting here in the upward direction here it will be acting in the downward direction if ax here is acting towards the right here it will be acting towards the left okay and this is the angle uh, theta which we just found out that is the angle of the arch with the horizontal this is theta this will be 90 minus theta this and this will be again theta okay now we have to resolve this ax and ay along the radial shear and the normal thrust okay so component of this ax along the normal thrust this will be ax cos theta and component of ay along this normal thrust this will be ay sin theta and similarly component of ay along this radial shear this will be ay cos theta because it's making an angle theta with this okay and component of ax along this radial shear this will be ax sin theta okay after that normal thrust this will be uh, equal to sum of because both are acting in this direction okay normal thrust this will be the sum of ay sin theta plus a ax cos theta okay because both are acting uh, towards this direction so we will take the sum of these two okay you just have to resolve ax and ay along the radial shear and the normal thrust this angle is theta it means this angle this will be 90 minus theta because the angle between ax and ay this are total is 90 so if this is theta this will be 90 minus theta and again this will be theta okay So normal thrust this will be ay sine of theta plus ax cos theta. Uh, put the value of ay which is 140 sine uh, theta is 35.75 ax is 83.33. This gives me the value of normal thrust equal to 149.42 kilo newton. Okay, this is the value of normal thrust. Now radial shear. You can see for radial shear ay cos theta this acts in the downward direction and ax sine theta this acts in the upward direction. So we have to take the difference of these two to find the radial shear. So radial shear this will be equal to ay cos of theta minus ax sine of theta. Okay, ay uh, is 140, theta is 35.75, ax is 83.33. This gives me the value of radial shear equal to 64.93. 
a kilo newton okay so this is how you can find the radial thrust and normal shear uh, for uh, three hinged parabolic arch or uh, three hinged uh, circular arch you just have to first cut the section at the point okay then draw the fpd and then you have to resolve the forces uh, the, along the normal thrust and the radial shear okay normal thrust this is uh, normal at the uh, cutoff section and radial shear this acts in the radial direction okay just resolve the forces along the normal thrust and radial shear and take the algebraic sum and you will get the value of normal thrust and radial shear i hope this solution video was clear and effective and you definitely learn something new if you still have doubts you can write them below in the comment box okay and i will try to answer your doubts okay and if you found this video helpful please uh, subscribe to my channel share this video with your friends thanks for watching and stay tuned